I think is what sets her apart. And this is a UCLA team with plenty of weapons, all conference players up and down the lineup, but she kind of gives them that extra something that could mean a national championship this year. Four straight trips to Oklahoma City. Maybe this is the year. Well, I think that it's going to start with Rachel on both sides, her in the circle as well as up to bat. Rachel Garcia and the Bruins have been dominant here at Easton Stadium. You see the ERA under one, and they'll try to roll on with a victory here. Missouri already has a win here in this Los Angeles Regional. First pitch comes up next. The Wildcats and the Bruins, Big Sky champs against the Pac-12 co-champs here. Game two of two today. The NCAA softball regionals presented by Capital One, already Missouri a winner. Will it be UCLA in game two? Rachel Garcia leading the charge. Just one loss this season to Arizona, and the junior will be in the circle to start things. Well, she has so much experience. UCLA ended up third last season at the Women's College World Series, and it looked like Garcia maybe ran out of a little bit of gas at the very end. This year, they have a little more depth in the, per in the pitching circle. They have Holly Azevedo left to back as a sophomore, but it's the freshman Megan Faramo who's really made the difference. That's allowed Rachel to really kind of carry this team, but also have them come in when needed. 10 double figure strikeout games. She had 15 against Arizona. Well, she did, and, and last week she did drop her first game of the season. She is going to throw the ball hard in the high 60s. She has every pitch and really mixes up, and that's why hitters, they're really not sure. You'll see hitters watch a lot of strikes and swing at pitches out of the zone. That's why she gets a lot of strike strikeouts. Let's take a look at the Capital One batting order for Weber State, a team that has won 20 of 22. They started off slow in non-conference play and have really picked it up. We talked about Saltern, but you also have to keep an eye on Camarero has seven home runs, their power hitter in the third spot in the order. Well, and it'll be interesting to see if they can respond to the type of pitcher that Rachel Garcia is tonight. The pitching that they've faced, they've been hot as of late, and that key is can they keep that going and swing the bats the same way against Garcia. There they, you see the smile from Saul Turn, Jr. from Smithfield, Utah, three-time first-team all-conference player for the Wildcats. Eight all-Big Sky selections, and their coach, Mary Kay Amicone, has been coaching at many different levels and successful. She was a coach at BYU, an assistant at Utah, former Weber State player, and she fits in perfectly with this program. Well, she does. She has so much experience, different programs she's been with, but her players this year, you know, you could tell how proud of them she was and was all about being here this weekend, not threatened the fact that it's at UCLA, but instead, okay, we're ready to come show what we're made of. Big Sky Coach of the Year. And they said they will be vocal in that Weber State dugout through the, throughout the course of this one. Fastball to Saltern is in there, and she falls behind 0 and 2. Mark Chorus calling balls and strikes. Vince Price, Jim Bertuzzi, and Tanya Gehrig in the field. First to third. Fastball, strike three. Good start for Garcia. And that is strikeout number 208 this season. One, three straight pitches right there. Garcia throwing in the upper 60s, 68 miles per hour, that curveball that probably is going to look like it's going to be away, but it's going to break perfectly over that outside corner. And these hitters are going to have to try to pick out which pitch is in the zone early on Rachel Garcia. Landy Hawker, the center fielder, takes strike one. This is a team with a lot of slappers up there. They, they'll try to put the ball in play. Bountiful Utah product just north of Salt Lake City. Hawker, a three-year starter. And they have had some good wins this year, one of them against Stanford, two to one in eight innings. But this is a, this is a level that uh, is tough to compete against. Well, and I think it makes it hard as well. You see a pitcher that throws as hard as Garcia does, moves the ball as much as she does, and they probably haven't seen another pitcher like this this season, but it's also at night, which makes it seem even quicker for hitters. 0-2 to Hawker, and she fouls that one off. Garcia's relationship with Lisa Fernandez, uh, two players that can understand being a great pitcher and great player together has been really special this season. Well, Lisa Fernandez truly one of the best to ever play the game, and so to have that at her as a mentor is so important. 
Trapper to Brianna Perez at short, across in time. Two down. And a nice play right there by shortstop Brianna Perez. Her release so quick at shortstop. Truly one of the best shortstops in the country. There you see the Bruins infield. Washington has fit in nicely for Kylie Perez, her sister that is now a volunteer assistant. And the outfield, plenty of speed. Goodens had a great freshman year. Nichols can do it all in center field. And Shaw, primarily a defensive player for the Bruins, Manning right field. Chloe Camarero. Back in her home state. Big thrill for her playing UCLA. One of the things I like about Garcia is just the command she has over her pitches. She has a spot that she is looking to hit and she doesn't miss much. She knows exactly where that ball is going to break and where it's going to end up. Let's foul back to the screen. Weber State set down in order. Now UCLA gets their first look at senior Addie Jensen from Morgan, Utah, in the circle for the Wildcats. And Addie Jensen has been their star pitcher as of late. She had a knee injury earlier this year, had surgery on it in January, but second half of the season has really been the one in the circle for them. She's going to throw high 50s to 60 miles per hour. She'll use both sides of the plate, her screwball and her curveball. And she really tries to mix in a little bit of off speed to try to keep hitters off balance. But I think for her just early on to be able to make sure she's hitting her spots, what she's trying to get to keep these UCLA hitters not to make hard contact and to keep this ball in the park. First team all big sky pitcher as we look at the Capital One lineup for UCLA. They're a, a team that has plenty of pop. And Bubba Nichols probably the most complete of the group leading off. Average power and the leader in slugging percentage as well. What can she not do? Uh, is there a weak link with this lineup? It's hard to find one. There's really not. I mean, throughout this lineup, one to nine, and even on the bench for them. I mean, the depth that they have this year really has been a testament to why they've been top one or two in the country all season long in rankings. Bubba, a fan favorite of a lot of people around Westwood. Consistent at the plate, plays with no fear, a coach's dream. Junior from Merced, California, and she looks at ball one. Well, just, she's so athletic. She can do it all. She came in as a shortstop, has been playing center field for them, and been a top hitter for them for her entire career. She's on a 19-game hitting streak currently. During that streak, five home runs, and she's driven in 23. There's a fastball for a strike from Jensen. There you see the numbers. 
And you've got your leadoff hitter with 14 home runs getting things started at the top of the lineup. And she gets way out in front of that one and pulls it foul. Well, and the fact that she's leading in the different categories you mentioned, I think the fact it helps to know that she's going to get the most at-bats out of anybody. You want her. She's been in the top of the lineup, but today they chose to put her in that one spot to be able to give her the most looks. Jensen with the 1-2. Bouncer into left field, the base hit, past the diving White, who couldn't quite get to it. Nichols wants two, and she's in there safely. A close play at the bag, and Nichols leads things off here with a double. When you're the leadoff, you find a way to get on base. This is an off-speed pitch up in the zone. Nichols doing a nice job of hitting it to that left side and takes advantage when she sees that ball bobbled a little bit. I like the aggressiveness right off the bat for Nichols. It's a UCLA team that is fourth in the NCAA in batting average coming in. Coach Inouye Perez has a lot of options and that's what maybe is most impressive, the way they can move people around into different positions offensively and defensively to get the job done. Here's Brianna Perez. Showing bunt, gonna lay one down. Catcher has it, Hoda first, and through the glove of the first baseman covering. And that'll score Nichols. Bruins are on the board. And it's actually Ho, the second baseman, that came over to cover. And UCLA is off and running. When Lauren Ho behind the plate jumped on that ball, that was a beautiful bunt, but close to the catcher, Lauren Ho, she came up to make that. But I do think it was the timing of getting to the bag and the speed of Perez that allowed that ball to make contact with Perez. Now Aaliyah Jordan. Power to all fields, sophomore from Chula Vista. That last at bat, a single and an error on the catcher, the ruling. Two time first team all Pac 12. I mean, you know, you lead the Pac 12 in batting average last year at 429. It's hard to be disappointed with a 384 average of the season. <laughs> She's unbelievable. The throw down to second, not in time, and there's a stolen base for Perez. 19 of 19 in that category. Stealing bases. And so many different options that UCLA has. And right now showing with that speed and Perez taking off, being aggressive. I expect to see UCLA pulling it all out this weekend, knowing this is postseason. Every single pitch matters, and we want the national championship. Well, they're playing in that fast-forward mode right now. One one to Jordan, pulled towards second. Ho. Only play at first, and that retires Jordan. That does move Perez over to third base. <laughs> Bruins have hit 60 home runs this year. They've stolen 58 bases. They have 78 doubles. And here's Rachel Garcia. Last year's National Player of the Year, ESPNW, NFCA, USA Softball. For her, it's all about team winning the national title this year. That's first and foremost on her mind. One as nice as all the awards are. As great of a player as Rachel Garcia is, the true competitor in her, she would give all that up to win a national championship. You know that, that it's all about the team. It's about winning that final game of the season and, and being number one. A long ball threat every time up there, Garcia. She had six RBIs 
at Washington. They swept the Huskies this year in Pac-12 play. Well, I think there's just some players that rise to the occasion, and I think the tougher the situation, the better Rachel Garcia is. One, two, hit in the air to left, hit well, and caught by the center fielder, Hawker. Tagging up and scoring is Perez, and it's 2-0 UCLA. And Garcia doing her job to bring in Perez from third base. At first, weren't sure if that ball was going to be out of here, but stays just in the park. But nice at bat to bring in Perez and put your team ahead to nothing. And your Jensen out there, you you get Garcia out, and now you have to face Taylor Pack, who's a 383 hitter with 10 home runs and 43 RBIs in the fifth spot in the order. Pack takes a lot of pride with her work in the weight room. Very strong. Senior. Well, and I know last year she really worked her way into the lineup because of her bat. She was splitting time behind home plate with Paige Halstead last year. This year she's been someone who can play outfield first base. Um, really versatile athlete, but it was her bat that kind of made the difference that allowed them to say, okay, we got to figure out a, a way for you to get in this lineup. Hits a hard foul. Pass the bag at the hot corner there. Jensen, it's <laughs> smiling with Faith Ho. This is a, a group that has a lot of fun, and they really enjoyed their run through the Big Sky Tournament challenge here, but uh, they've had a good attitude from the get-go heading into the postseason. Two and two. When I love that Lauren Ho behind home plate and Faith Ho, the second baseman, twin sisters, said we're a package deal. Wherever we go, we both go together. But talking to Addie Jensen, she just said how great it is to have Ho behind home plate because of just the confidence she even gets her, even though she's a senior and, and Ho's only a freshman. It's Faith at second, Lauren behind the dish. Here's a 2-2, pulled foul again. Pack first team all, Pack 12. She'd like to teach after graduation. Part of the all-tournament team at the Women's College World Series a year ago. Jensen's 2-2. Base hit left field. Pack is on. She went high to get that one. One of the pitcher, I don't, I don't think you, you know, you can be too mad about that pitch you just threw. I mean, that was all packed going up and getting her hands through that ball. That ball was above her head. The good hitters will find a way not only to hit the strike somewhere hard, but also pitches out of the zone. Brianna Tautalafua, the Bruins' third baseman. And we'll talk a lot about the versatility of UCLA in this regional. But this first inning may be a microcosm of it. You get a sack bunt, you get a sack fly, stolen base, three hits. All different ways, and I think a championship team has to be able to do that. You have to manufacture stuff and, and have a lot of options and then get the timely hitting when you get those runners on, take advantage of mistakes of the other team, and, and all those things kind of work together to, to get you to the end. And, and I know last week... Their last series in the Pac-12, they faced Arizona, who was number six in the nation at the time, and they dropped two out of three. And Coach Inouye Perez said, you know, that was kind of a wake-up call for us. And I'm really glad we got that out of the way last weekend because now we start fresh, and we can use that as a fire going forward. 
you never want to lose, but sometimes those are the things that do give you that extra juice, as they call it. Well, and she said they hadn't faced that much adversity. They did have three other losses, uh, Michigan earlier in the season, Oregon and Stanford. But the idea was, okay, wait, this is now a three-game series, and we just, you know, lost that series to them two, two out of three games. And in the end, the idea is to be peaking. And so I think it was more like, okay, we can be beat. We've got to figure this out. And in those close games, we've got to find ways to finish on top. They did not win the Pac-12 outright because of that. They still won a Pac-12 co-championship. Three and one to Tau Talafua. Pulls it on the ground to third. Camarero charging in time to end the inning. Jensen gives up a couple runs. And UCLA gets on the board first. We're through one frame in Westwood. Bruins up 2-0. The NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. UCLA has been dominant in postseason play, an NCAA tournament record 35th regional appearance. Rachel Garcia, 1-2-3 first inning. And this is a team this year that has gotten off to quick start, 68 first inning runs, and they do it again and uh, give their star pitcher a little bit of a cushion. She doesn't need much of one, but she has a two-run lead. Well, and that's always nice, that any team you're playing for, to be able to have that, but especially if you're Rachel Garcia. <laughs> Chances are pretty good to find a W. Ashlyn Visser leading things off. Fastball, she can't catch up with it. Took a big cut. When I expect these Weber State hitters to try to start swinging early in the counts, especially if they can find a ball that stays in the zone, maybe a curve ball to one of the sides. She's known as a free swinger. She's not disappointed coming after Garcia with a couple big swings. Junior from Magna, Utah. Honorable mention, all big sky this year. Fouls that back. Rachel Garcia and Paige Halstead have been calling their own games this season, working a lot with Lisa Fernandez, who actually took over the role of calling some of the games for the girls, but they all talk amongst themselves, and they've really given them the liberty to, they said, you know, you guys can kind of see from that angle and that view the best. And there's a fastball off the plate, and she can't catch up with that one. Second strikeout for Garcia, one down here in the second. And I think when you see the success that they have and the trust they have in each other and you have the experience in a senior catcher like Paige Halstead, you know, you, you get that liberty to do that. But this curveball, what I, I love about Garcia is that she can beat you so many different ways. She has a really good rise ball with that jump. She throws that curveball on different levels, different planes. Here's Faith Ho. Swing and a miss. That's... 15 strikes and one ball so far from Garcia. Very sharp, finding the zone as she's been throughout the course of the year. Faith attempting a bunt there and misses on it its own too. Well, it's the movement because that ball, it, even if it's a curveball, it's not necessarily changing planes that much but they're still missing the ball completely, which tells you that that ball is breaking and they're not even able to track it to stay on line with it. Swing and a miss, and the fastball just too much for Faith Ho. The freshman is out, two down now. The Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday, May 30th at 12 Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2019 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Now Sadie Blacker, the designated player for the Wildcats. Well, they just can't catch up with it. Not many people can, but the, this is a new new thing for Weber State, seeing the, the best in the business doing it right now. Well, it really is, and there's not really that great of a way to prepare for something like this. You have to see it in the box. 
And strikes out the side. Four Ks for Garcia. Six up and six down. Seven, eight, nine hitters coming up for UCLA. Leading 2-0. Opening round play here in Westwood. And we welcome you to Clearwater. The amount of great matchups and great teams here. Good piece of hitting here. It is gone! Spectacular matchups all weekend here. To the track! And it is caught! What a catch! Are you serious? A magical couple of days. What an incredible event. On the ESPN family of networks, big success this year. Next year, we're going to start revealing teams through the course of this weekend and get you up to speed on that 16-team invitational. A lot of fun. Well, that tournament is just so fun. The fact that the best teams are attending it, it's on TV, everybody gets to watch it. I mean, what a great way to start the season off, just seeing the best compete, and especially the fact that it's televised. UCLA off to a 2-0 lead here. Two run first, and it'll be Paige Halstead leading things off against Addie Jensen. Great tradition here for the Bruins. 11 NCAA titles, 12 national titles. 63-6 and six at Easton Stadium in regional play. 97 wins overall in regional play as a program as Halstead swings and misses. And four straight Women's College World Series, but again, you think back to the 2010 season, it's been nine years. It's a hard thing. You've got to be lucky and good to win the whole thing. You can be as good as they've been and still not win the whole thing. Well, and that's it. It's, it's all about being able to be that last team standing. And, you know, you, you see just the parity throughout this sport. You, you see that Oklahoma was able to win it back-to-back. -back. Florida a number of years ago back-to-back. -back. And that's what UCLA was known for. But since 2010, this has been their goal to get back and to be able to claim that title again. Three and one now to Halstead. And for the seniors like Halstead, there's more of a sense of urgency. You always have that in your final year. She knows nothing but Oklahoma City in her career. It's it hard in the air to left. It's going to hang up there. Coming in is Pesca, one down. How about the Bruins in regional play? They have been dominant. Look at the numbers. And well, the Supers as well. It's just the legacy that this program has, the history. I mean, they win. That's what they do. And, you know, you talk about home field advantage, being able to play regionals at home, super regionals at home since that was implemented in 2005. And, you know, you do have that, but you're ranked for a reason. And basically the idea is do you come to play? They get those players that come and immediately make an impact. We've seen that again this year, Megan Framo and Kelly Gooden in the outfield. And so that's it. They just keep rebuilding and, re you know, adding players to the already strong, strong program. And, and that's why they're saying, could this be their year? 58 and seven last year, lost to Florida State, the eventual NCAA champs in the semifinals. Kinsley Washington back through the circle. Shortstop White to her left, the throw not in time. Close play. Washington with the speed down the line reaches for an infield single. Well, that was a nice try by Sydney White being able to get over that ball. That ball was hit kind of off the very end of the bat, giving Washington enough time to just leg it out right there. Shortstop White almost had her. Now Kelly Gooden, and what a freshman campaign for her out of Seal Beach, number two in the Pac-12 in batting average this year. And to have a number nine hitter that can turn that lineup over, that's, that's another piece for this program. Well, and leaving the team with a 426 average, <laughs> you're not going to usually see teams putting the player with the highest average in that nine spot, but they've just found that that's really been the best place for her to be able to turn the lineup back around. And especially after that first time through the lineup, she really does just become another leadoff hitter. Lays off of that one with the third baseman, Camarero, charging. 
First team all pack 12, one of 10 finalists for National Freshman of the Year. Highly decorated in her first year here. And that is fouled off off the end of the bat, trying to lay one down. And I think the biggest thing of utilizing her as a number nine hitter is because she doesn't have as much pop in her bat. And you have a Brianna Perez with that speed, but she also has a lot of pop and brings in a lot of RBIs for them. And so you, know, you figure out what works best in that lineup. And a swing and a miss. Strikeout for Jensen. That's her first of the game. Two down. On a nice pitch away, this screw ball that just starts on the corner, and then by the time it's breaking over the plate, you can see Lauren Ho behind home plate reaching out for that ball as it broke away from Kelly Gooden. Nice pitch by Addie Jensen, and, and an important out right now coming to the top, back to the top of the lineup. And here's Bubba Nichols who doubled and scored first time up there. Cool. Jensen was number two in the Big Sky in ERA this year. She originally started junior college and then Utah Valley, but wanted to move closer to home in 18 minutes from campus, her hometown of Morgan, Utah, not too far from Weber State. Oh. Fastball in there, 101. When she was talking about some of the girls in this program that she had seen them at a tournament, they got talking, and these are girls that she knew from travel ball and kind of got talking with them and said, you know what, I think, I think that's going to be a good fit to finish my career at, and just said she was really happy she made that transition. Nichols hits it hard to third, gloved by Camarero across in time. Good job by Jensen and that Wildcats defense to keep UCLA at bay. Still a 2-0 game. We head to the third inning. Bottom part of the order for Weber State coming up. Rachel Garcia strikes out three in a row. So much movement, so much velocity. I don't know if I've seen a pitcher get out of bases loaded no miles more than Rachel Garcia. Rachel Garcia has just been outstanding. And that is why Rachel Garcia is one of the best pitchers in the country. So many accolades, so many awards. And the thing she mentioned, though, she's constantly trying to get better and better, and she thinks she's an improved teammate this year. It's hard to find negatives, but she continually wants to improve. Well, definitely, and I think great players do that, and they, they do find ways to improve. She was 29-4 and four last year on the season, two of those losses coming at the Women's College World Series. But I know she talked about working this year with Coach Lisa Fernandez and really a little more of the mental game. Obviously, she's already mentally strong, but you can find ways to even get better, and that's what she's been doing. One of the things saying, you know, changing her reaction depending on the strike zone. She said that's something that she's just tried to get better at, it just really figuring out, okay, what are they calling, and I'm going to make my game work there. Let's get into the minds of the umpires a little bit. <laughs> And, and I don't think she really showed it a lot in the past that it did affect her, but clearly there was something there, and that was one of the things that Lisa really wanted her to work on to say, so what? Even if you're not going to give me that, I'm going to still find a way to beat them. Lauren Ho leading things off, falls behind one and two. The younger of the twin sisters, her sister Faith plays second base, one of 18 sets of twins playing Division I softball this year. Well, that was a good get for Weber State to get twins that are productive, you know, freshman year starting right away. Well, and I think that says a lot about the players that they're going after and recruiting, and they said they committed there, and then some other bigger programs had come after them, but they've been really happy to be able to go in and immediately make an impact. Good numbers this season, batting in the seventh spot in the order here. Garcia's 2-2, in there, strike three. That is four consecutive strikeouts now for Garcia. Five Ks for the game. And Garcia will throw that curveball a lot, but she will place it in all different locations. She's 
thrown a lot that stay off that outside corner and then break over it. And then that one away from right-handed hitter. Courtney Pesca charging from the corner, showing bunt, pulls the bat back. Weaver State really, they dominated the big sky. They won their league by five games in the regular season. Winners of 20 of 22. There's a swing and a miss. And you got to credit Coach Mary Kay Amicone, Big Sky Coach of the Year. She's seen a lot of softball at a lot of different levels. Well, you just talked to them, and they were talking about how they were really peaking at the right time, that they had a really tough first half of the season, obviously out of conference. And it was in conference when not only did they start clicking with their bats, but Addie Jensen being able to get stronger in the circle and start throwing more games for them really helped them to get some of those wins and keep some of those teams from scoring so many runs. Pesca swings and misses. Strikeout number six, and that's five consecutive Ks for Garcia. Golden State leads the series two games to none tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. Well, game three of the Western Conference Finals from the Moda Center, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Coverage tips at 8 with NBA Countdown, both streaming live on the ESPN app. You can watch anywhere. Here's Sydney White. When we mentioned Garcia had 15 Ks against Arizona, she is off to a pretty good start in terms of setting down people with the strikeout so far. Yeah, and to be able to do that against one of the programs that's top program in the country says just how great Rachel Garcia is and how much her ball moves. Three-year starter, Sydney White. That one just misses. Kinsley Washington thought that was strike three. She started trotting towards the dugout from her position at second base. Well, definitely if you're a defender, you, <laughs> you also have a strike zone. And, and I think you think, okay, where did that ball miss? That's a little bit upstairs. Garcia's laughing now. I, I think her teammates kind of <laughs> keeping her loose out there, knowing, okay. Two, two. Strike three called inside corner. Strikes out the side for the second consecutive inning. And she now has eight for the game. Bruins rolling with Garcia in the circle. Perez Jordan and Rachel coming up next. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. The number two overall seed UCLA in front of Weber State 2-0. This NCAA Softball Regional presented by Capital One, and all eyes on the Bruins this year, especially on the West Coast. Will this be the year they win it all? If they do win this Los Angeles Regional, they'll take on the winner of this Regional. Now, Michigan's the number 15, but James Madison, a dangerous club there. Well, they are. They have Megan Good, who is one of the top players in the country, another pitcher who also hits and plays both sides, and, you know, that was one of the regionals they were wondering okay is there going to be an f -sit? this is going to be a great matchup between michigan and james madison wolverines getting a shutout victory in their first game so far seven strikeouts for rachel garcia addie jensen pitched well in the last inning keeping the bruins off the scoreboard after giving up a two-run first brianna perez leads things off You mentioned how special a player Perez is, their best athlete arguably, triple threat. And she had to make a transition without her sister Kylie over there at second base in terms of being on the field with her. But she is in the dugout, which is a positive. That's really helped her out as a volunteer assistant. And she's on board, hit by a pitch here. Yeah, it's great to see the relationship that they have. And I know that Bree talks about Kylie and just how she still will watch her and she'll see different things and pick it out and, and kind of give her advice. And, and that's what they did all season long last year when her sister was a senior and she was only a freshman. 
And they had the middle infield. And Coach Inouye Perez mentioning she's in a lot of ways the core of the team, Brianna, despite the fact she's a sophomore. That's that's quite a compliment with all the talent on this roster. When you see just those players that have kind of that natural leadership and, and her being a shortstop I think really helps as well. Big swing from Aaliyah Jordan. Speaking of talented sophomores, here's another one. She had a couple home runs at Arizona State this year. Power to all fields. She has nine home runs, but it's the 18 doubles that to me just tell you that she's hitting those balls in the gap, that she's getting through the ball and she's lifting it a little bit and, and giving herself some extra time to be able to, to take two. Runner going, lifted in the air to center. Hawker's under it, makes the catch, one down. Ed Perez on the move there. Pretty good jump. Jensen, considering, has done a pretty good job here. <laughs> you know, after that first inning, she settled down a bit. Well, and even a couple of their hits were kind of off the end of the bat and kind of found holes on the field. So right now they haven't really been hitting the ball that hard. I think Rachel Garcia's fly out to the fence and left center was the hardest hit ball so far. And here is Rachel that picked up that RBI in the first. Last year hit 11 home runs. Drove in 54, just under those numbers this season. Runner going, throw down to second, a one hopper. It is there for the out. And they get Perez. And that's the first time she has been caught stealing this season. Big moment there, Lauren Ho with the delivery. That's the quick release by Ho. She threw from her knees, but the transfer was what I was impressed with. And the one hop allowed them to, to just make that tag, Sydney White making sure she tags Brianna Perez to get that out. So heads up play on that run. Perez was 19 of 19 on stolen bases prior to that out. And that's a, a mini win here for Weber State. They've done some good things defensively in this one. Garcia lights that one up, right center, and it's caught by Hawker at the track to end the inning. Two long fly ball outs off the bat of Garcia, but Jensen gets out of another inning unscathed. Top of the lineup coming up for the Wildcats. We'll hear from Coach Inouye Perez when we return. Bruins up 2-0. We move to the fourth. Bruins in front of the Wildcats, 2-0. We're joined by Coach Enoy Perez of the UCLA program. And Coach, you talked about over the wall. Coach, thanks for your time. Absolutely, thank you. 2-0 lead for the Bruins. They've out hit Weber State 4-0 in this one. Top of the order, Takesha Saltern to lead things off against Garcia, who has struck out six in a row. Safe to say she's in a groove right now. Well, she's just throwing like Rachel Garcia throws. <laughs> this is what she does. She, she attacks the zone. She puts the ball there, but is moving it, spinning it. And she has an off-speed pitch, but probably won't throw that out unless she really needs that. And I love that she has those extra weapons that she can always go to if she needs. 
Fourth in the NCAA and ERA coming in at 0 0.98. Saltern can't catch up with that one, and there is strikeout number eight, seven consecutive Ks for Rachel Garcia. When it's hard enough to really put a, a good swing on the ball, but as a slapper, generally you're just trying to contact it. You're just trying to hit top half of the ball. You don't have to get all, all the way through it, but it shows with what we just saw in Takesha being a 400 hitter, not being able to contact it, really shows how much that ball is moving. Now, Landy Hawker, now you faced Lisa Fernandez in terms of great pitchers. That's what you're kind of speaking to, right? Just somehow get the ball in play. It really is. That ball is moving so much that you're trying to be able to get on plane with it. And, and you've got you to gotta be able to lay off the stuff that is moving but then is not going to end up in the strike zone. But it also helped to, at the time I was playing, it was the Pac-10, and we faced the best teams. Now it's shifted a little bit to the SEC. Pac-12 is also very strong. Big 12 and, and a lot of conferences. But the idea is the more you see it, the better chance you have usually of, of making those adjustments. Hawker grounded out to short her first time up. You see the numbers there. She also can really run, has seven career triples, four of them this year. She can find her way on. First team all Big Sky, second team all conference a year ago. And you know, setting the tone, Coach talked about it, just to get that thing set early in this regional. It's game one, but they're off on the right foot here. And I like what she talked about, just doing the little things right. She said that's when we're at our best, and we don't want to start lifting it because sometimes when you think, okay, we see different pitchers, and now we feel like with this pitcher we can really connect, coach reminds them, no, like let's stay through it, let's get base hits, let's get runners on base, then let's try to get, you know, the, then those extra base hits that fall in and we can get those extra runs. But, but she knows. I mean, she's played this game long enough. She was one of the best in the entire game and has coached for so long at this elite program, and she knows it takes all of it working together to win a national championship. 2-2, two -two and Hawker strikes out. Nine strikeouts, eight in a row for Rachel Garcia. The thing I like also about Rachel Garcia is just how fluid she is. When she is pitching, she almost looks effortlessly. She, she just she throws, this one's more of a drop ball now. She has that curve, I've seen it go up almost like a curve with a little bit of rise, and that one had more drop on it. And that was the first off-speed pitch that I've noticed. And if you think back to the last at-bat, Chloe Camarero hit the ball hard to right field. Blows the fastball by her there, 1-1. One -one. So she starts her out with that off-speed pitch. Let's mix that in and let you know that I have this as well. And, and I love that. I love that this is the game that Rachel Garcia and catcher Paige Halstead are calling themselves. Fouls that off. Camarero tops in the big sky in RBIs. Their power source trying to find a way to get on here. Popped up. Washington coming in. Makes the play and another 1-2-3 inning. For Garcia, she has struck out nine. It'll be Pack, Tata Lafua, and Halstead coming up next. We'll talk to Mary K. Amicone, the Weber State head coach, next from Westwood. The Bruins in front of the Wildcats, 2-0 bottom of the fourth. We're joined by Wildcats head coach Mary K. Amicone. 
Coach, your squad coming in, winners of 20 to 22, I know you love the way they've competed, and you're, you're hanging in here against a really good pitcher. Your thoughts so far? Well, we're needing to make some adjustments with the speed of the game. So I, I feel like we're going to do that, and we just got to keep uh, adjusting. And Coach, Addie Jensen allowed three hits. You know that you're only going to get better every year, and so a lot of that, you get these great freshman players like we're seeing in, in the host sisters, and, and you know you can build off of that. Taylor Pack singled her first time up, and she gets another look at Addie Jensen here in the fourth inning. Tough place to win here when you come into Easton Stadium. We mentioned what the Bruins have done in regional play. This year, 18-3 and three at home. Two of those losses to Arizona in the series you mentioned. Six and two against the AP Top 10 this year. Pack pulls it. And a foul ball. Well, even for them finishing the way they did in third place, t losing two to Florida State, who went on to win the national championship, they knew that from that moment they build on that. They were only getting stronger. They added Faremo in the circle, this freshman phenom, really, for what she's done for them. And, and Kelly Gooden in left field added some options defensively, depth throughout the lineup, girls they go to for pinch running or pinch hitting. And so they have all the tools that it takes. The impact did not offer, says the first base umpire Vince Price down the line. And we will see Faremo in this regional, and she's special, a fierce competitor, freshman from Vista, California. You know, and, and every year they get some of the top softball players in America. She was the number one recruit in the nation last year, Faremo. Strike three called, Pack caught looking. Good pitch there by Jensen. Let me talk about her settling in. And a nice curveball right there that breaks on that outside corner to Pack, who has been seeing the ball well lately and hitting the ball hard. And Weaver State, they were talking about how they wanted to make sure that they didn't change anything either. They're not looking at it like, okay, it's UCLA, their number two team in the country. Oh. But instead, they just need to continue doing what they did to win the Big Sky Conference tournament and try to just see if they could find some timely hitting. Garcia, obviously the biggest obstacle <laughs> for that right now. But I really like what I'm seeing out of Addie Jensen in the circle. Tau Talafua grounded out first time up there for the Bruins. Off speed pitch there from Jensen, a beauty. They were really a different team at the start of the season, Weber State, without Jensen and with her now. They've really found something special. There's a ground ball hit to short. White has it. And it's dropped by the first baseman. Good throw by White. Visser can't hang on, and Tato Lafua is on. Don't miss a minute of the action from the NCAA Softball Regionals. We'll take you to the best live action on the Bases Loaded channel on the ESPN app. You can see every game, every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series only on the ESPN networks. An error there. And now the Bruins will go to a pinch runner. It'll be... Dene Bloget at first base. And this is something that you'll see UCLA use often, different bench players for different starters to come in and run to put some speed on the bases to be able to try to manufacture some stuff and 
part of the, the depth that we're talking about, all the different options that they can throw to just put more pressure on defense as well. Paige Halstead with one out and one on. Halstead has been improved swinging the bat this year. She was just a 202 hitter a year ago. Look at those numbers. Up over 300. Well, and I know she's just been somebody they really needed behind the plate. Just her expertise and her experience and, and what a great catcher she is. And so for her, that's something she worked really hard on to be able to find a way because last year she was splitting time because although defensively they really wanted to rely on her, offensively Pack at that time had was beating her out. Two and one. <laughs> That's what you like to see. Having a good time out here. Big moment for this Weber State program playing in front of the number two overall seed and Addie Jensen pitching well. Right back through the circle. Second baseman Ho flips to the shortstop covering for one. It's a high throw on the relay, but they do get the force play. Ho to White, two down. Well, the ball looked like it was going up the middle. A great shot by Halstead, but Ho was shaded up the middle right there, easily grounds that ball. White tries to do that turnaround and make that throw, but just launches a little bit of a visser. Was that a pirouette? What was that move there? It was pretty, pretty effective, but the throw just wasn't on the money. Yeah, I think she kind of went where her momentum took her, but... Again, the speed of the game, you talk a little bit about that, and it really is at the top level, it is a quicker game. And for them, it's the idea of, okay, try to be able to respond and not rush yourself too much, but, but make those same plays. Infield single last time up for Kinsley Washington. And lay a bunt down. Charging is Camarero, throw to first, it's off the money. Off the mark, not on the money, and we have a couple base runners now for UCLA, and that is a tough play to make for Camarillo, Camarero with uh, Washington speed down the line at first. Well, now you get Speedy Gooden coming up, but Washington has all kinds of speed. Just shows that sneaky late drag bunt, and Camarero comes in hard, tries to throw the ball on the run, but just too far for Ho to be able to, to stop that ball. So a bunt single for Washington. She's now two for two. The Bruins are going to go to a pinch hitter here. Going to be Malia Quarles, sophomore from Cerritos, with an opportunity. She'll hit in good and spot in the order. The well, last at bat, Gooden came up, and even though her numbers are in the 400s, she's more of a slap line drive hitter. So to be able to have this power on the bench in Quarles is a perfect opportunity and time to, to put her in. Bruins looking for a little insurance here. They put two runs across in the first inning. Jensen has allowed only one extra base hit. That was the double of Nichols in the first to lead off the inning. Two and oh. And Lauren Ho going out. She's that freshman who encourages the senior, Addie Jensen, talking to her, reminding her just to stay 
in her own zone. The idea is not to try to do too much. Don't start pressing in this situation. Just spin that ball, locate it. Quarles trying to keep the inning going. Top of the lineup is on deck. Bubba Nichols. 3-0 now. There's Bubba. Already has a double in this one. Ball four, bases loaded. That's the first walk given up by Addy Jensen. And now pinch runner for Quarles as the Bruins will bring in Kelly Gooden. She's back in there at first base. Well, now it gets interesting because you've got Bubba Nichols, who has been sensational with runners in scoring position, one of the top players in the country. And a big spot for Addie Jensen. Won her last at bat, hit a ground ball very hard to third base, Chloe Camarero. And she's seeing the ball well right now. They have her in that leadoff spot for position, but this is the situation you want Bubba Nichols up in. She's coming out swinging, pulls that one foul. And I love that aggressiveness. You know, you, you kind of wait and see situations. And that last hitter, Corals, came in to pinch hit, and they walk her. But she comes up even after four balls in a row and, and is like, okay, I'm going to swing at this first one that I see that's in the zone. Being aggressive, knowing that Addie Jensen does not want to fall behind again. Hitting over 400 this year, hit over 400 last year. Nichols awaits the 0-1. That's a strike on the corner, 0-2. She's done a pretty good job locating that pitch off the plate, just off the plate on the corner. Yeah, that curveball is something she's really relied on that and her screwball. O2, ground ball to short. White flips to second, and they get the force play and get out of the jam. Addie Jensen again avoids some damage, keeping this a 2-0 game. It'll be Visser, Hohen, Blacker coming up for the Wildcats, trailing by two as we go to the fifth. A pitcher's duel here in West Wafar on 50 pitches. And you just see it, this amount of strikes that she throws, and that just shows that she... Puts balls, locates them in the strike zone, but then also she gets a lot of swing and misses. Nine Ks so far. Looking for her 14th complete game and seventh shutout of the year. And pulls the string there to Ashlyn Visser, swing and a miss, strike one. When you start to get into these later innings and we saw Garcia really attacking that zone. Now a couple hitters throwing that change up for the first strike. Ground ball hit up the middle. Perez on the charge, makes the play. And had a chance to get through there. Perez covering a lot of ground for out number one. Golden State leads the series two games to none. Tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN Deportes, we'll have game three. It's the Western Conference Finals from the Moda Center, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Coverage tips at 8 with NBA Countdown. Both are streaming live on the ESPN app. You can watch anywhere. Perez makes that look easy. That is not an easy play out there at shortstop as Faith Hose now up with one down. She just reads the ball so well off of the bat and, and has made so many amazing plays on the run. But it's that first step and knowing where that ball is going to end up and being able to read that right hop to make that play and make it look easy. Faith Ho, who is 16 minutes older than her twin sister Lauren Ho, the catcher. She said her mom had a sandwich, and then after Faith came into the world, Lauren came into the world. 
And uh, this is a, a great group of freshmen. And anytime you have that bond, they know each other well. They know some tendencies out there. And a second baseman and a freshman from Walla Walla, Washington, part of this Weber State program. When you talked a little bit about Kylie being in the dugout for UCLA, and last year was their second baseman, their leader, and their senior, and, and she's Brianna Perez, the shortstop sister, and how much they talk to each other and help each other out. And we saw the same thing talking to Faith and Lauren, just that they really need each other to help each other out and remind each other when they're doing something wrong. And, and I love that because it's that encouragement and that just helps you kind of get back into the groove. I think they got a rally dance going on. <laughs> Wildcats <laughs> optimistic. There's a swing and a miss, and that's strikeout number 10. Double digit Ks now for Garcia, two down. That's the 11th time she's had double digit strikeouts this season. Well, that's pretty daunting if you're the opponent, huh? Yeah, in this situation, I think you just have to keep your head down and keep swinging and just getting somebody on base and hoping you can get a run in somehow. And Sadie Blacker pops it up. Halstead gloves it in the inning. A quick one, two, three frame for Garcia as she rolls on. Bruins still have the two run lead. Two, three and four hitters coming up next. I can do this with my eyes. I can juggle. I can move my ears. <laughs> I love to paint. Yeah, I can speak pig Latin. I sing. Yeah, I can make a pig noise. <coughs> I know sign language. Hi, my name is Rachel and I play softball. Yes, she does. And this UCLA team has a 2-0 lead. Garcia with 10 strikeouts. Leading the charge, two runs in the first inning have stood up so far for UCLA. And a new pitcher now for Weber State, Tatiana Sue Sue, a senior from Blanding, Utah, gets the call. Coming in for Jensen, who pitched pretty well in four innings of work. She really did. And Sue Sue is going to be a similar look down in the zone. She has a drop, a curve, and off speed. And when she's throwing well, she's allowing her defense to work with ground balls behind her. Brianna Perez leading things off. 100 appearances, 32 career wins for Sue Sue. That's number two in school history, those two categories. Perez fouls that one off. And Addie Jensen really has been their leader the second half of the season, but Sue Sue has 106 innings on the year and has carried a lot of the weight and helped him to get to this position as well. Strike called to Perez, who has scored a run. She's reached a couple times so far. Hit by pitch last time up. And you know, if you're the Wildcats, you have to be pretty pleased where you are right now. Only down two, bottom of the fifth. They'd like to see their offense find some answer, but not many people do against Garcia. That one will find its way into right field. Past the diving Faith Ho, Perez is on again. And good hitters find a way to get on base. Perez kind of swung around this ball a little bit, but she finds that hole on the right side. Ho trying to be able to stop it before it goes in the outfield. But even with that speed that Perez has, you know, she most likely is going to beat that all even if that ball gets stopped. Yeah. 
Big Sky Tournament MVP, Faith Ho. Big Sky Freshman of the Year. And now Aaliyah Jordan with a runner on. Oh. Fastball in there. Good pop on that fastball from Sue Sue. Yeah, she's really trying to work that outside corner, keeping that ball low at their knees. Even when she was threw a couple balls to Perez, it was just off the plate, so nice location. Jordan fouls that off in a hole now 0-2. And if you're UCLA in this situation, kind of like Coach Inouye Perez was talking about in her interview, you really try to just do the little things right. You try not to swing too big. You really try, you know there's a lot of expectations on you in this type of regional being the number two seed, but it's, a, it's about staying within yourself. High fly ball to center. Hawker camping under it in left center field, makes the catch. Retiring Jordan as Perez moves back to first base. This week on ESPNW.com, we've got regionals breakdown, how UGA's Alyssa DiCarlo handles the pressure, and UCLA's freshman stars all coming up this week. Here's Rachel Garcia. Again, already has an RBI, has flied out to center field a couple times. One of those times driving in a run. With a sacrifice fly in the first. Chance to help her cause here. Well, and she was just missing in the last two at bats. I mean, hitting that ball right to that fence both sides of the field. And I like the fact that she has Taylor Pack behind her to protect her. It's so important to be able to have hitters that people can't throw around. Here's Pack in the on deck spot. Missouri won our first game here over Cal State Fullerton 7 to 4 thanks to two home runs. Off the bat of Hattie Moore, a two run homer and a grand slam in that Tigers victory. Here's a 2-1. Curveball just missing away. A nice spot for Sue Sue. Hitters count here for Garcia. There's a strike on the outside edge. The pitch to the All-American. Ground ball to short. Knocked down by White. Flips to second for one. And the relay not in time. Good play, though, by White to stay with that hard hit ball. Two down. And I think the fact that Brianna Perez was caught stealing her last time when she was on base made a big difference of why they chose not to go. And that allows this play to be made. You see White knocking that ball down, keep it in front of her. They try to turn the double play. But the key out was that first out at second base. Because normally they're stealing Perez in that situation. And we see yeah, we saw her go first two times she was on the base pass. You're right in the first and the third. Pack singled in the first, called out on strikes in the fourth. Fastball in there. Bruins have six hits in this one. They have had three hits in the first inning, one in the second, one in the fourth, and one more here in the fifth. They've been scattered after that first inning. Yeah. 
You see Sue Sue falling a little bit behind these hitters. And I think it's important for her to be able to kind of keep hitting that spot. And she does right there. That's a nice location. I'm just saying you don't want to have to bring it over the plate too much to these hitters because that's the one thing that UCLA so far hasn't really been able to do is get that big hit. And you don't want to, with one swing, allow this game to get a little too far out of reach. The 3-2. Ball four. Off the plate with that one, and Pack is aboard for the second time. Brianna Tautalafua has grounded out and reached via the air, and now a conference in the circle. And we're also going to have a pinch runner for UCLA. Stevie Wiz will run at first base for Pack. And no, actually, it's second base for Garcia, so they put her at second as the lead runner. Sue Sue, a lively arm here, trying to get out of this jam. First pitch swinging, fly ball to center. Hawker tracks it down. And that ends the inning. Again, the Bruins strand runners. Two runners in this inning, and it remains a two-run game. We go to the sixth inning. Seven, eight, and nine hitters for Weber State next from Los Angeles. The Women's College World Series. Journey planned for all year long. The destination, the champ series in Oklahoma City. season with a dream 64 will actually get to do it UCLA has been to four straight women's college world series will they get back there pretty good effort from Weber State coach Mary Kay Amicone has to be pleased Wildcats hanging in there down two nothing top of the sixth inning and this Wildcats program has won four regular season titles in a row. But last year, we saw Sacramento State as a representative from the big sky. So they had a, a score to settle, and they got back to Westwood. Well, they did, and I think it's hard because they win that regular season title, but it's all about who finishes strong and can win in the conference tournament. And, and they finally made that happen, knowing they had to take matters into their own hands because it, that's what's hard. You can win regular conference games, but then all of a sudden everybody kind of knows what you have, and, and it's all about getting hot at the right time of the season. It's been a dominating performance from Rachel Garcia, 10 strikeouts. As Lauren Ho is up there and fouls it off, only one ball is left the infield. That was a fly ball to right off the bat of Camarero to, to end the first inning. Ho struck out in the third. Fastball, too much to deal with, one and two. Just to get a base runner would be a big win for Weber State. They have a lot of slappers, and they're not able to catch up with that pitch from Garcia. Up high in the zone, her 11th K, first out of the inning. Seven Innings is the weekly softball podcast with ESPN personalities covering the sport, entertaining us all the way to Oklahoma City and beyond. Listen now on the ESPN app, iTunes, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Which regional is the toughest? Good question. Ugh, I, I might say that Minnesota regional. Big cut from Courtney Pesca. But I think as we get into that day two and see different upsets that are happening, we might start changing our mind. I saw Harvard had an early 1-0 lead over Arizona. 
in that Tucson regional. When you get to postseason and you know, you just never know how people are going to deal with the pressure or what teams are just going to kind of play out of their minds and anything can happen. Heska swings and misses. Okay, how, what's the approach now if you're Weber State? Is there an approach with the way Garcia is dealing it right now? For me, the hitters are still staying kind of in the middle of the box. I probably want adjustment to either be scoot way up and try to get it if I can. But if I felt like that ball was coming in super hard since they probably haven't seen her speed, then maybe I'd go to the very back of the box. I'd probably change something. Even though it's out of my comfort zone, I'm thinking I still want to give myself a better shot either to see it longer or get it before it breaks. 2-2, Two -two, and there's that fastball again. That's a dozen strikeouts for Garcia. Her season high, 15 against Arizona. And she has set the tone from the get-go. Well, she continues to get better, and Coach Lisa Fernandez right there, as well as Kirk Walker. He worked a lot with her last year on her pitches, but it's really been the mental game that has kind of helped. If Rachel can get any better, <laughs> she will continue to get better. She'll continue to develop pitches. Coach Fernandez working with her on that off-speed pitch. But that mental game and how to think and challenging them, even physically, making them so tired. They said different workouts they would do and then go through a workout. That's something that I think of when I played with Lisa Fernandez on the Olympic team that she would do because then there's no excuses. You, you know that you can be at your worst and still beat the best that you're competing against. So you're saying her intensity is good for Rachel Garcia to, to be that, uh, to bring that. I mean, I, and it looks like in a little conference there, a short one. Mikkel McQuesten will be the pinch hitter now for Weber State. She's going to hit in white spot in the order. Freshman from Salem, Oregon. Two, swing and a miss. That's a Baker's dozen. 13 strikeouts for Garcia. She strikes out the side and keeps this a two nothing game. Bottom of the six coming up. Bottom of the order for the Bruins. Looking for a little insurance here in this opening round game in Westwood. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance and you gotta Give the kudos to Rachel Garcia, 13 strikeouts in six innings of work. Well, this is what we expected to see out of Rachel. This is what she does. She makes hitters guess. They swing and miss a lot. She gets a lot of strikeouts. And, you know, she's just continuing to attack the zone, beating hitters many different ways. And I love that the second half of the game she started pulling out for a few batters, the off-speed pitch. And now as hitters, you're thinking, okay, what doesn't she have? <laughs> she's already striking us all out. 13 strikeouts. She can beat you so many different ways. Looking to move to 21-1 and one this season. Colleen Sullivan's going to pinch hit in Paige Halstead's spot in the order to open up this sixth inning for UCLA. And she's one of the leaders, uh, really from a standpoint of being in the dugout as a leader, student of the game, catcher at times, and gives him a little punch as a pinch hitter as well. Very opinionated, and, and you need a few of those players in the dugout. When they said early on she was studying the game, calling the game with Rachel as well, and having multiple options even for catchers. I mean, you don't see that a lot of times, so the depth we keep talking about just continues to show with these different options that they're giving a look right now. And, and they know that's what you need uh, to find different ways in certain situations. Maybe there's a better matchup with somebody you can put them in at different times. So 
I think it's good that they're getting this many opportunities, even in this first game here in regionals. She's drawn 13 walks, second best on the team in that category. So the Bruins in control thanks to Rachel Garcia. If you had to point at the negatives, they have left too many out there. Seven stranded in this one. I think that's the biggest surprise is just their bats not coming to life. And like you're saying, when they get those runners on, being able to do a better job the first inning we saw right off the bat, they put those runs on the board, but really haven't done much since. Chopper up the middle, that's a base hit for Sullivan. Seventh hit of the game for the Bruins. As a pinch hitter, nice to come in and get your job done, but more than that, as a leadoff hitter for the inning. And now Zoe Shaw is going to run for Sullivan at first base. Shaw's another piece, and maybe not a, a major piece, but you know, she can play some right field, she can pinch hit, she can pinch run. Yeah, she tends to be more of a defensive player for them, but gives them different options in this situation to be able to put her in to run and, and have more speed on the base path, base path. Look at the hanger in the hat there for Perez in the UCLA dugout. You like that? Like that look? It's, this doesn't surprise me one bit. I, when it gets to the end, these rally caps, I mean. Washington gets a hold of one to center, and it's over the head of Hawker and up against the fence. Shaw's going to round third. Coming home, here's the throw. Not in time. 3-0 UCLA, and Washington delivers, clobbering one to center field. On her last at bat, she had a bunt single. This time she swings for the fences. This ball carries a long way. Hawker was going back, but then she just backpedals at the last second. Lots of speed coming around, and you see how close that play was. is. Lauren Ho, the catcher, trying to come up with the tag, but that shows why them putting Zoe Shaw in to run right there in that situation was so important. Fourth triple this season for Washington. And a little insurance for the Bruins here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And Kelly Gooden back in there to bat for the second time in this one. Slaps at it, bounces it up the middle and into center. An RBI for Gooden scores Washington. It's 4 nothing. And I talked about Gooden having the short game, not being someone who comes up with a lot of RBIs, but that is a perfect piece of hitting in that situation. She had already been pinch hit for, so now she needs to get the job done. Perfect placement on that slap up the middle. And she uses that ground, good bat angle to get that ball to hop over Sue Sue. Washington in all the way. And now they're gonna see if they can try to blow this thing open. Single, triple, single, and here's Bubba Nichols, top of the order. Late swing there. Fouls it off. Nine hits for UCLA. Three in the first, three more here in the sixth inning. Foul off. Yeah, we saw the UCLA rally caps. Despite leading, you can go to the rally caps as a leader, right? Well, there's, totally there's a lot of expectations, so <laughs> <laughs> if you're not coming out, you know, in your minds, you're thinking you want to run rule everybody, right? So you're thinking we got to put some stuff together. 
But I'm most impressed with Colleen Sullivan coming off the bench as a pinch hitter, getting that leadoff hit to get things going, then them using a pinch runner that gave them the speed when Washington gets that hit. The versatility that they have, Washington laying a bunt down. And you see, they'll just feed off that. In this game, so many people, you watch it, you hear all about momentum because the idea is you get that energy and it happens a lot more natural when people start hitting and scoring. Three and two to Nichols. Are you a big believer that uh, these type of performances late in games can carry over to the next game? I think so because otherwise you're trying to think, okay, you, you want to let it go on the at-bats that you didn't get it done, but you're building off of when you start stringing things together. Everything's kind of a building process, and, and when you haven't done it, then you're trying to start out. Nichols drives that into the right center field gap off the fence on a hop. And will score another run. RBI double for Bubba Nichols as Gooden touches home plate. It's 5 nothing. Hitting is contagious. Bubba Nichols, we knew she was capable. She can hit the long ball. She hits the gaps. Beautiful swing, taking that ball opposite field. Speed all day with freshman Kelly Gooden. And that's what they're used to seeing. It's a little bit of a surprise. It took them six innings right there to make some of those different adjustments. But you got to credit Addie Jensen and even Sue Sue last inning. 59 RBIs now this season for Nichols. Sue Sue will stay in there. And the two runs early was important for UCLA, and then they just rode the coattails of Garcia, but we're starting to see what this team is capable of here. Four consecutive hits to open up the sixth. Here's Perez, laces it down the right field line, just foul. That would have scored another run. When they start seeing that ball well, they start staying through the zone, getting their barrel to contact point. Bree Perez, another athlete who has so many options, just so much speed, can lay that bunt down, slap with a short game. In this situation, runner in RBI situations, you know her job is right now to find the grass somewhere. Showing bunt, offered on it. Bree has five home runs. One of those was an inside the park home run, which showcases the kind of speed she has. That was against Robert Morris. Here's a bouncer hit up the middle, base hit, RBI. That'll bring another run in as Nichols scores, and it's 6 0. And those smiles are for a reason. Right now, they are starting to put it all together. This base hit up the middle, not trying to do too much with it. She fouls off that one right before that. Bubba Nichols coming around again to score. They scored in the first inning for them, and now again in the sixth. Still nobody out. Single, triple, single, double, single in this sixth inning. Here's Aaliyah Jordan. And there's a smile from the coach. Hammered up the middle, base hit. They have found their groove offensively now as Jordan is on for the first time. This is why you take nothing for granted in this game and you play until the very end because things can change in a hurry and they've had that lead like you said. Rachel Garcia doing her job in the circle for them but just giving them enough time and, and you know that adjustments are being made and Third time through the lineup, fourth time through the lineup, lots of changes happening. And Weber State's going to make a pitching change here. That'll be it for Sue Sue. And they will go to a new pitcher here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Nobody out. A couple runners aboard for the Bruins, up 6 0. Back with more from Westwood.
6-0 UCLA, four runs across here in the sixth inning as they have broken this game open, and Weber State will go with their third pitcher of the evening, Kate Donaldson, sophomore from Dana Point, California. She gets the call here in the circle. Well, she's going to try to mix speeds. She'll hit 60 miles per hour but stays low in the zone, very similar to the other two pitchers. Sue Sue was the one who throws the hardest in this staff, but her key really is to be able to control the zone because when she starts to get in trouble is if she's not attacking the zone and falling behind against hitters. And here's Rachel Garcia. Nobody out. Donaldson back in her home state. Garcia with 13 strikeouts in the circle. She has an RBI at the plate thanks to a sacrifice fly. Does not have a hit yet. Took something off that one. Drops in there. 0-2. You can see that intensity on her face. This is a big moment here, being able to come in not only against UCLA and her team being down, but against Rachel Garcia. One and two. Twelve hits for the Bruins, six of them coming in this inning. And both of Rachel's hits tonight have been to the left center gap at the fence into the right center gap at the fence. She's been hitting the ball hard. Chopper to short. White flips to Camarero and they get the lead runner. That's out number one. Heads up play there, shortstop to third. Garcia reaching on the fielder's choice. Jackie Prober's now running at second base. Uh, she came in for Jordan as a pinch runner. So Jordan and Garcia now on the base pass. There's Prober. And here's Taylor Pack again at the dish. Now Garcia represents the winning run at first base. They could bring that eight run rule into effect here. And as a hitter with a new pitcher like this, you want to make her come to you, get that timing down, maybe see a pitch or two, especially if it's the first time you're seeing her. And I know Pack, good at bat, last at bat with the walk, but struck out her at bat prior. 2-0 is foul down the right field line, out of play. And we've talked about UCLA being fourth in the NCAA in batting average. They led the Pac-12 in on-base percentage. Sometimes, you know, just that's the stat that means more, doesn't it? Well, it's getting people on, and then it's coming with, up with those timely hits. But, yes, I think that idea is having different ways to get on base, and we've just seen it with, you know, throughout the lineup, the speed options that they have, the power potential that different hitters bring to the plate. And the hits are coming around in this inning, but up to this point, they've had to kind of figure out different ways, and they did that in the first inning. Well, and, and listening to Coach Inouye Perez, she was, that's what she's talking about. She's saying, okay, even that first inning, the little different things we're doing, the bunting, the moving the runner, that's when we're at our best, but then eventually usually the, the balls start falling in, the extra base hits, and that's when we really tear it open. Ball four to pack, and the bases are loaded, and now the winning run is at second base, represented by Garcia. So the Bruins have an opportunity to close it here in the sixth inning. Tau Talafua is grounded out, reached on an air, and flied out thus far. Strike one. 
Senior from Carson, California. And you see her numbers there, but since her return to the lineup against Utah, she has really been swinging it well for the Bruins. Well, and they've really needed her at third base. Defensively, a lot of these players have been shifting around this year and moving, and they said we can trust anyone in any, any position. But I know with her at, at third base, you know, that's the best option they have defensively, and so being able to allow her to use her bat is important too. One and two. Ninth hitter in this inning for UCLA. It started with a single from Sullivan. Four runs across already in this inning. Chopper to short, White, tag, and the throw to first, and the double play. Sydney White gets Weber State out of the inning, and we will go to the seventh. Six-nothing, Bruins in front. UCLA trying to move to 1-0 here in the LA Regional. AA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? For Rachel Garcia, they will get Azevedo in to try to close the door, get her some postseason experience, sophomore from San Jose. And she's, she's a competitor. Well, they have three different pitchers who all could be aces on any team and, and really are. They share this workload. They complement each other. They all have complete confidence in that circle. And Azevedo, just someone who Coach Inouye Perez says she – wants that ball. She is there, ready to go. She says, I, you know, we got your guys' back, but I want the ball. So six innings from Garcia. No runs, no hits, 13 strikeouts. At one juncture, she struck out eight in a row through the second, to the fourth inning. When you have to be so pleased with that start that she had tonight. I mean, that's what's expected out of her, but you know, she's someone that hitters have to try to figure out and if her team can put these types of runs on the board I mean they're going to be tough to beat. Jackie Prober is now in right field for UCLA as they make a defensive switch. As Vito Pac-12 all fresh uh, all freshman pick a year ago she had complete game shutouts against Oregon State and Utah this year as you look at UCLA defensively here trying to close the door against Weber State. Top of the order, Takesha Saltern to lead things off. And I think if I'm Takesha Saltern, I'm thinking I'm glad it's not Rachel in the circle. <laughs> glad to see a different number out there. Now, if you're Weber State, it's been tough sledding against Garcia, but again, this is a regional, and you know they've got a chance to keep their season going tomorrow in that. If it's an elimination game, you've, you've got to have a selective memory, don't you? You definitely do. Your idea is you kind of erase this, and if anything, you think, okay, I saw so much movement against Rachel Garcia that the other adjustments might not seem as big to make. And that could be against Cal State Fullerton if Weber State's not able to Pull off a rally here in the seventh. Saltern's had a great year. Career school record, 143 runs scored at Weber State. It's a chopper to short. Perez, and that is off the mark. Saltern's on her way to second. And the Wildcats have a base runner for the first time tonight. Well, the difference is in that situation, her last two at-bats, she struck out. First one looking on three straight strikes. Second at-bat, she was slapping, running through the box. But here she's able to do what she knows best. That's why she has a 413 average, and they're just not able to come up with that play. Not common to see Bree Perez throw that ball away. 
And the Wildcats have a pinch runner. Here's Landy Hawker now at the plate. Now Saltern's going to stay in there at second, no pinch runner, but they have a base runner, chance to get on the board here. At least avert the shutout here in this opening round game. It was interesting hearing Coach Inouye Perez talking about Holly Azevedo and how she's an open book. She's a little bit of aloof, aloof player out there, but she says in a good way. You have different personalities, obviously, when you're out there. Well, she said she's the type of player that is kind of like, you know, it's great if you like me, but even if you don't, it's not really going to affect me one bit. <laughs> like, I, I'm going to go and do my job. That's hit down the right field line, playable, and it drops foul. Giving a chase over there was Prober, also the second baseman, Washington. And I think what happened with all this, Prober is in right field now, and she had come in, and there have been a lot of moving the players around and inserting and, and taking players out, and um, Rachel Garcia started off as the pitcher. That's hit down the right field line. Prober charging, makes the play. One down. And I, I think it could have been a substitution situation um, that allowed that. But also, I think UCLA knows they are going to have to use each of their three pitchers. For Ramo, I would expect to see her tomorrow possibly start the game. Um, and I think we'll see a lot of Azevedo as well going forward. In all likelihood, it's against the Missouri Tigers, who got a good effort from Maddie Norman in the circle today. Wasn't her best effort, but she hung in there, and then the offense came a lot. When you got to be able to give up a couple to a few runs and know that your team can still keep you in, especially with the way the balls have been flying out of the park across the country this year. And so for his pitchers to really be able to, even defenders, you know, you make mistakes or a couple runs come across and you think that's okay. Like, we can turn it around quickly. And, and Missouri did a nice job of that, of staying in that game and, and picking up that W. Chloe Camarero with a runner out there and one out. Looks at a strike two and one. Weber State's third NCAA trip. They made it in 2015 and 2016. Still looking for their first NCAA tournament victory. Off speed pitch, a beauty from Azevedo. Two and two. And that is one pitch that she is known for, is being able to throw that change up in any situation. And as a hitter, you know that she has movement. She kind of will mix up using her corners, but it's, it's being ready for that change up in any count that you really have to be looking for. Swing and a miss, strikes out Camarero and the Bruins are one out away. And she comes back with that rise ball at 66 miles per hour, but that prior pitch is what set this up. And so all of a sudden this looks even harder, that ball going up in that zone, nice placement, nice movement. Check swing for Ashlyn Visser, and she fouls that one off. Last year, Azevedo, 15-0. She's had a lot of success with this program, huh? Well, she took her first loss of her career, 11-1 now, because last weekend she lost to Arizona. But, I mean, she's just seen success. Oh, took something off that one. That fooled Visser, and they're a strike away from... Getting an opening round victory here at the Los Angeles Regional. UCLA fans sense it. Looking for the shutout. 
Pitch to Visser. Swing and a miss. And the Bruins win it. A couple Ks to close things for Azevedo. A combined no-hitter from Garcia and Azevedo. Garcia strikes out 13. Two runs in the first, four runs in the sixth. Break it open. And the Bruins.